right, Michael Recycle. Very interesting. There once was a town called Aberdu Rhyme, where garbage was left to grow rotten and slimy. Ew. It never smelled fresh, the air was all hazy, but the people did nothing. They got rather lazy. Would you want to live in a city with all that garbage? No! Look, there's a cat! Yeah. A cat, a cat and garbage. <laughs> and then something happened that none could explain. It wasn't a bird, and it wasn't a plane. A green cape crusaders, crusader soared through the air with a colander hat on top of his hair. <laughs> Do you guys know what a colander is? No. You know how when you make spaghetti, you dump the noodles into a big bowl and all the water oh, squishes out? Know. That's a colander. Mom has yeah. Mm -hmm. It has holes in it. That's what he wears as a hat. He bounced off the earth with a thump and a bump and then landed head first in the town garbage dump. He brushed off his suit as he jumped to his feet and grinned at the townsfolk who he came to meet. I'm Michael Recycle and I have a plan, but I need your help. Everyone to a man. The sky and the river are smelly and brown. Soon, 50 foot bugs will take over your town. I don't want to see any 50 foot bugs. Look, there's a cat. Yeah, is he in this one too? Yes. He's going to fall off. This cat. <laughs> it's too much garbage. They're all tired. You've got to recycle. You've got to act soon before all your trash reaches up to the moon. Then crushing a can, he gave them a wink. A this is a wink. Bouncy shoes. He used them as decoration. He recycled. And vanished from sight before they could blink. Miss Mooncotch exclaimed to her friend Mr. Crew, Did you happen to hear what that boy said to do? Clean up and recycle. How hard can it be? A green and clean town would be lovely to see. <laughs> what do you think all the people are going to start doing now? Cleaning up. Cleaning up and what else? Throwing trash away. Throwing trash away and recycling. Very good. They recycled their paper, their plastic and cans, and even old junk, like used pots and pans. They also began the Be Greener campaign. They grew their own kumquats and saved up the rain. What do you think they saved up the rain for? Check that out. That's where they're saving the rain, into those buckets. And it attaches to the hose, and what are they doing with it? To water the plants. Yeah, they're using rainwater to water their gardens. That's pretty cool. So proud was the town of their green transformation, they threw a great party, a grand celebration. They covered the town in green toilet paper, then rolled it back up to use again later. You may think that's yucky, but these folks don't agree. In Aberdu Rhymey, recycling is key. So they decorated with all that green toilet paper, but then they rolled it back up because they didn't want to waste it. Yeah. When Michael came back to visit the town, he didn't despair, get angry, or frown. For everything looked so clean and brand new. The sky and the river were again bright blue. Look at our town! It gleams and it glitters. Now nothing's wasted and nobody litters. Who can tell me what litter is? Raise your hand if you know what it means to litter. What do you think? Throw garbage on the floor. Yeah, they throw it on the ground or on the floor, right? That's not good. It's because my um... We'll think about it. We'll come back to it later. To Michael Recycle, the green caped crusader, our super green hero, the planet's new savior. <laughs> so what is it Michael Recycle's job to do? Who can tell me? Raise your hand if you think you know. Yes. Did he clean it up or did he tell people how to clean it up? He tell people. Yeah, that's pretty cool. But Michael Recycle was nowhere around. He'd already moved on to help the next town. So if you should see a green silhouette streaking the skies, please don't get upset.
The noises you hear, that clunk and that thunk, what noises do you think it'll be if you hear a clunk and a thunk? Uh, it'll be the superhero doing what? Clean up the trash. That's how he lands, right? Remember at the beginning he landed in the garbage dump? Clunk, clunk. It's just our friend Michael recycling old junk. He's right there. I don't think he's eating it. He's making stuff out of it. That's what you use it for. Alright, so here's some things that we can do as a recycler or ways to save the environment. Are you ready? Yes. These are Michael Recycles Go Green Tips. First, turn it off. Turn off your electronic equipment like the TV, computer, and stereo when you're not using it. How many of you have gone to dinner and left the TV running in your room or playroom? Yeah, sometimes we do that, right? Well, a way to save energy, turn it off. You can always turn it back on when you get in there. Recharge it, please. Ask your parents to buy rechargeable batteries and energy efficient light bulbs. How many people have seen those squirrely light bulbs? You know what I'm talking about? They're not the round ones. They got the little curly spring looking thing in them. Yeah, yeah those are. My mom had a light bulb that can change colors. Cool, but those save energy, those little squirrely ones. All right, don't be a drip. If you have any faucets in your house that drip, you know how they drip, 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 and keep doing it, drip, drip. Make sure you tell your mom and dad so they can fix it. It also Wait. saves on their water bill. Wait, how did it fix it? There's just usually rubber washers in there. They can take it apart and put a new washer in it and it stops dripping. Yes? One time my mo our basement, mine and my mommy's, my brother's basement was flooded by water. Yeah, that happens sometimes. All right, next, take quick and or quick and clean take short showers unless you're really 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 smelly uh, let's see no running when brushing this is a big one you should turn the faucet off while you're brushing your teeth because if you're brushing your teeth and the water's running the whole time guess what's going what's happening to all that water it just gets wasted right yeah all right we'll do one more take a stroll whenever you can you should walk or ride your bike Maybe you can get your parents to ride along with you, right beside you. That's pretty cool, huh? Yeah. So those are some easy things that you can do at home to help the environment and to recycle. All right? This book is called, We Planted a Tree. That's the title. It is by Diane Muldrow, illustrated by Bob Stake. We planted a tree. We planted a tree. We planted a tree and it grew. The sunshine went into the leaves and brought food to the tree and the tree grew up. Fat little buds appeared on the branches. The sunshine went into the buds and soon they burst open. Everywhere it was pink. We were dizzy with springtime. The sun kept shining. The pink blossoms dropped off. And soon there were green leaves. Green, green, shiny leaves, which had food inside for the tree. Green, green, shiny leaves, which cooled us, which kept the earth cool. We planted a tree and it grew up and gave us a shady place. The tree's leaves helped clean the air, and we breathed better. The tree fed us apples and oranges and lemons and sap for our syrup. 
Syrup. Syrup, yeah. We, we eat syrup. We planted a tree and it grew up. The tree kept the soil from blowing away. Now rainwater could stay in the earth. The soil became the soil became healthier because the tree was there. So we planted it. We planted butternut squash and beans, corn and onions and cabbage in the healthy soil, the rich, dark dirt. We could grow our own food and we ate better. <coughs> and we planted a tree and it grew up and it dropped acorns that fed the squirrels in the winter and birds came and other animals came too to live with the tree. We planted a tree and that one tree made the world better. We planted a tree and that one tree helped heal the earth. Uh. We planted a tree and it grew up and so did we. The end. That's it. That's we planted a tree. Compost stew, an A to Z recipe for the earth. Environmental chefs, here's a recipe for you. To fix from scratch, to mix a batch of compost stew. Ingredients, apple cores, bananas bruised, coffee grounds with filters used. Dirt clods crumbled, eggshells crushed, fruit pulp left behind, all mushed. Grass clippings, hair snippings, and an insect or two. Just add to the pot and let it all rot into compost stew. Save jack-o'-lanterns, kitchen scraps, laundry lint, and dryer traps. Mulch removed from garden beds, nutshells, oatmeal, paper shreds. Just add to the pot and let it all rot into compost stew. Take tea bags plucked from long hot swimmings. Underbrush prunings, vegetable trimmings. Wiggly worms with compost cravings, Xmas trees, needles, yellow pine shavings. Mm -hmm. 
and zinnia heads from flower beds whose blooming days are through. Just add to the pot and let it all rot into compost stew. Moisten, toss lightly, cover and let brew. And when the cooking is complete, Mother Earth will have a treat. Dark and crumbly, rich and sweet. Now open the pot and what have you got? Compost stew. The Sea, the Storm, and the Mangrove Tangle by Lynn Cherry. Over a shallow, salty, tropical sea, a flock of pelicans flew around a mangrove's island. From the branches of this tangle of mangroves dangled a long, sprouting seed called a propagal. As a pelican landed, it jostled a branch and the propagal fell into the sea. For weeks, the propagal was carried by a strong current until it came to rest on a shore in a far away lagoon. There it took root, sprouted leaves, and began to grow. For decades, in the hot Caribbean sun, as tides rose and fell, it slowly grew and grew and sent out prop roots to help it stand. You can see the prop roots. By its 15th year, its vast network of roots anchored the little mangrove tree, allowing it to survive storms. It was now quite a distinctive tree. A mangrove tree crab scuttled by and exclaimed, How can a tree grow in this salty sea? She climbed the seedling to eat its leaves and made the mangrove her home. Mangrove oysters, sea anemones, and a coral settled on the roots. Small fiddler crabs dashed and darted about below the high tide line and disappeared into the holes under the mangrove's roots. A periwinkle tree snail came upon the mangrove seedling and thought, I can eat the large algae that grow on these roots, so it stayed there to live too. Mangrove leaves fell into the water, decomposed, and turned into muck. In this muck, seagrass began to grow. See a squid. Several more years passed and the mangrove tree became larger, sending out more branches and prop roots. It grew flowers that were pollinated from the wind. Driftwood floating across the sea carried anole lizards to the mangrove tree. We can eat the ants, mosquitoes, and other insects that crawl and fly over the flowers, they thought. Hummingbirds hid their nests within the mangrove's tangled branches, while a caterpillar and the mangrove tree crab nibbled upon its leaves. After the mangrove flowers dropped their petals, propagals began to form. These living seeds grew long and heavy until they fell down between the mangrove roots and into the seagrass. There, the new propagals began to grow. A seahorse carried his babies in a pouch in its belly. Here is a good place for my babies to hide, he thought, and gently released them into the seagrass bed. Mama shrimp fish and others laid their eggs there as well. Grunts and mangrove snappers fed on the seagrass at night and during the day they hid there from the bigger fish among the mangrove roots. The propagal grew into many mangroves. For 70 years this mangrove tangle grew and grew and spread out farther and farther. Dolphins found the water around the mangroves teeming with fish and decided to stay there too. Manatees came to feed on the seagrass and they too made the waters around the mangroves 
their home. A hundred years had passed since the first propagal planted itself here and the mangrove tangle had become a big mangrove island. As a flock of pelicans dove for fish, two fishermen came by. One said, let's cut these mangroves down and create us a shrimp farm. The other fisherman replied, but these mangroves are the only trees that can grow in this salty seawater. Many of the fish in the ocean start their lives and nurseries around these mangrove islands. If we destroy the mangroves, we destroy the fish, and the fish are what give us all life. And so they went out to sea, and they left this island in peace. Two pelicans tucked themselves into the mangrove and thought, here we can build a nest and dive for fish. Hurons came to hunt for shrimp, crabs, and small fish. A magnificent frigabird puffed up its large red pouch to impress his mate. I would love to live. <laughs> One afternoon, a pelican flew to the mangrove island. Breathlessly, she cautioned, Beware, prepare, a storm brews. A wild wind blows this way. She called to the creatures of the air, Come hide deep within the tangled branches of the mangroves. The manatee lifted their noses in the air and they sniffed. Yes, there was the sweet, damp scent of rain coming. On the horizon, they could see far away plumes of rain descending from a raft of dark clouds. A hurricane was on its way. The seahorses called to the other creatures of the sea. Come hide with us beneath the roots in the center of the mangroves. Here we will be safe. So they swam, crawled, scurried, slithered to the shelter of the mangrove roots. That evening, the breeze became a screaming tempest. Thick, dark, frothing clouds raced through the sky. The hurricane was here. All the animals cried. Winds sang and moaned through the mangrove tangle, lashing, breaking, and tearing at its branches. The birds held on, fighting the power of the hurricane throughout the entire night. Under the sea, the sand churned as huge waves tossed and turned the fish. The seahorses trying to rip the mangrove roots from their hold, which was holding on to the sea floor tight. The next morning, all was still. The sun shone from behind the retreating purple clouds, and the mangrove propagal floated away in the current. The birds came out from safety of the mangrove damaged branches. The periwinkle tree snails timidly peeked out from their shells and looked around. The fish, the crabs, and the seahorses swam out from the protection of the mangrove roots. They were all safe. Meanwhile, the mangrove propagal blown by the storm came to a rest on the shore of a far away lagoon. Ten years have passed. Dead, bleached branches still tell the story of that hurricane. But new growth has sprouted from the mangrove's broken branches, and the mangrove island is even bigger, wider, and deeper. Now, while pelicans dry their feathers, and dolphins jump, roll, and play in the waves, and manatees lazily roll around in their seagrass bed, while a heron hunts in the shallow, shallow water, and a hawk screeches, the mangrove propagal carried on the waves to a faraway lagoon has now grown into a little mangrove tree. And there it will continue to grow and grow and grow.